Here's the grid. 12 cars to run round four of the Touring Car Championship. They're racing. Getting away smartly is Richards and a blinder of a start from Dick Johnson from the second row. Moves right up on the tail now with the black BMW. Heading down to Castrol for the first time. Alan Jones has also made a brilliant start as well as they head through that corner and now out towards Motorcraft. And we've had uh, Dick Johnson, who has slowed up appreciably over in the rough now, rejoins the flag, rejoins the field, but running in last position. Trouble there for Dick Johnson. Heading up to Motorcraft, Jim Richards and the JPS BMW 62 will lead them across the top of the crest. Second held down by Brock. Third, back behind them, of course, is Alan Jones. And then Robbie Francovic and the Volvo moving up into fourth. Great start from Jim Richards. And the first three winners of all three rounds of this year's Australian Touring Car Championship have come off pole position. Can Jim Richards do it now for a fourth time? This is amazing. Well, the man who has the job ahead of him is uh, Dick Johnson, who got off the starting line like you couldn't believe, but then got hooked up with a whole bunch of cars and dropped out to last. Had to rejoin the race, but he's starting to make his way back through the pack. There's the field going through. Johnson has already picked up two of them as they come down into the bottom turn. And heading along the start, finishing straight, Jim Richards across the strike. One lap in, 39, and look at the run up here from Alan Jones. He's already been passed by the Volvo. Robbie Frankovic, who's gone from fourth to third. Great performance from Jones. He qualified the car very well yesterday. And this car here, car number 21, driven by Robbie Francovic, was so lucky to get onto the grid. They literally wheeled it out with seconds to spare. I went down to the tent around about half an hour ago just to see how things were going. And at that stage of the game, they hadn't even got the gearbox in. They've done a terrific job with the car be a little suspect. We'll wait and see. Jones tagging him out of the corner and uh, Neville Crichton is one spot back behind them as they go up Goodyear over the crest. And Jim Richards in good shape at this stage, still leading. And Peter Brock in second. The New Zealand of Francovic is back in third, followed by Jones and then Neville Crichton. And Dick Johnson steadily making his way back through the field. But that's going to be a costly move off the circuit in the uh, opening corner. And Tim Sloco also well positioned there on the robe of a test. There's the field coming through now. There's third as we join race cam with Dick Johnson. I wouldn't even consider wanting to talk to Dick Johnson at this stage of the race after problems down in this uh, in this particular corner in the opening uh, lap of the race. Gives an idea of the racetrack column bomb. The driver just in front of Dick Johnson as they come up to Motorcraft. Left hander that just keeps on turning left up to the crest at the top of the hill. Now it's downhill towards the right hander. Johnson now coming down on the inside of Columbine. Coming through the corner, G forces here. And Dick Johnson not having the most comfortable of weekends at uh, Wanneroo after pulling his back out on Friday and he's been walking around like a cripple for most of the weekend. He looked dreadful yesterday. He only did around about three or four laps in the second session of practice. It was hurting so much that he decided to just park the car and go home. And was a little disappointed to find out that Peter Brock had pipped his second position on the grid in that second session of practice. Well, went to visit a chiropractor last night, but the appointment didn't work out. We all know the problems of trying to find a doctor sometimes. So Dick Johnson in car number 17 is fighting his way back through the field. There's the man at work. Heading up towards Motorcraft, and it won't be too long before he's up, uh, certainly within, within touch of the uh, fifth and sixth place drivers. Seventh at the moment. I think the next car that he has to negotiate is the Rover Vitesse being driven by Jim Slago from Western Australia. That's the red car that we can see there at the moment from Race Cam, with Dick Johnson hard at work. This is the corner that was giving Dick Johnson most of the problems where the car was standing to get up on two wheels on Friday. That wasn't helping his back at all. It was pushing him straight back into the seat. Over the crest at Goodyear, down towards the right-hander. The Mustang closes up on the Rover under brakes. You get an idea of just how smooth Dick Johnson is at the wheel with race cam. And plenty of traffic up here for Dick Johnson. By gee, there's some dicing going on here for the minor placings. We're following the action just ahead of uh, Johnson as they come out of the corner. Slaco moving up from Western Australia. You can see it on the inside of uh, Alan Jones. Back behind them is Neville Crichton. 
Jones goes for the inside. Slaco has caught one out and one back almost in the death seat there. And Johnson is ranging up on the four of them as they go across the crest and head to the downhill section. That's Neville Crichton just in front of uh, Dick Johnson. Ahead of him in the red robe of the is, of course, uh, Tim Slaco coming into the right-hander now. And just uh, in front of him in the yellow alpha is Alan Jones. Heading back up the hill again. Good scrap this. This is where the interest is in the race as they go over the top of Goodyear. Well, Tim Slaco is doing a great job and isn't Alan Jones unbelievable in this two and a half litre alpha? And in the background, we've got so many Western Australians leaping and dancing at the prospect of Tim Slaco getting in there and uh, mixing it up with the, the heavies, as it were. But Slaco's car is an ex Andy Rouse, British saloon car championship car. He came out here last weekend, turned in some very good 66 and 67 second laps. Decided it was all very nice, put it back in the shed for a week, did a little bit of tidying up and came out yesterday and qualified very well. So he didn't want to play his hand at all to the visitors in town. Once again to Motocraft, the tightening left-hander. Slaco going through, Jones behind him. Claims to be developing around about 304 brake horsepower out of this particular car, which of course gives him quite a reasonable horsepower advantage over Alan Jones Alpha, which is developing around about 245 brake horsepower. Here's Slaco coming out of the right-hander at Cold Corner. With Alan Jones, who closes up quite dramatically in the tight parts of the course, but then moves out as Dick Johnson now moves up one slot and gets in behind his fellow Queenslander. Let's take a look at the details on Tim Slaco. 36 years of age from Western Australia, been racing for 21 years. Not a bad performance, is it? Of course, this weekend driving the Rover. He's raced at Bathurst five times and was in the 1980 Australian Grand Prix where unfortunately he pulled out of the race after receiving quite nasty burns to 27% of his body when boiling radiator fluid got into the car. Lives in Western Australia, actually an expatriate Kiwi, Tim Slaker. The Kiwis are doing well in touring car racing in Australia this season. And Slaker with a crowd of probably about 15,000. Western Australians cheering him on. They could have seen him finish strongly. Dick Johnson, meantime, is sitting in behind Alan Jones as they go over the top of the hill and head down to the right-hander. And this they're, they're also picking up Francivic, I believe. That's right. And this really typifies what Group A is all about. We've got an English Rover being followed by an Italian Alpha and chased by a German Mustang. Driven by a Queenslander. <laughs> Heading up Goodyear again, and this is where perhaps Dick Johnson might fall alongside. Yes, he comes down the inside of Alan Jones. Going to be a great strap here for the right-hander and the right-of-way, and I think Johnson has won that one clearly. Jones will go in deep, but drops back behind Johnson. So Johnson up one more spot on the field. Now has to close up on Tim Slaco from Western Australia. Jones, you've got to give him all the marks. He now pulls out of the draft and goes, trying to cover his tracks. Back with Neville Crichton keeping the pressure on him is really attacking this uh, touring car championship in a big way is Alan Jones. Here they come, over towards Motorcraft. Jones has been a joy to watch for the entire season, particularly a couple of weekends ago down in Tasmania where he was hurtling the Alpha around. And I had a quiet walk around the back of the circuit yesterday to watch what he was doing, and he really is a talented driver, and any wonder he was a world champion. Dick Johnson, the man, has probably passed more cars in this race than anyone else. Started off the second row, went back to dead last in the field. That put him back in the 12th spot and uh, presently in fifth place. The man in front of him, Tim Slaco of Western Australia, and uh, probably only 100 metres ahead of Slaco is, of course, the New Zealander Robbie Francis. Tim's got a little bit of a problem in this race because uh, one of the few areas that there's a weakness in his team this weekend is tyres. Unfortunately, only had a couple of tyre sets come out with him in the container from England. And so he's running on a set of tyres which have already done about half their life. And he said to be just prior to the race that he just hopes and prays that they'll hang on for the entire race distance. Heading up to Motorcraft again. Tim Slaco hopping down uh, fourth of the race. And Dick Johnson fifth. Out of them, and just disappearing over the crest is the New Zealander Robbie Francivic with uh, Kiwi Jim Richards still leading from Peter Brock. They've spread themselves out over a uh, probably 200 metres. Here's Johnson coming down under brakes under Slaco and takes Slaco on the approach to the right hander. So Nick Johnson comes out of the corner in fourth and Robbie Francivic uh, ahead of him just over the top of the hill running in third. 
Jones, like her not to be denied, having a go. And Alan Jones and Neville Crichton also uh, jousting on for their position. So the Australian Touring Car Championship with Jim Richards up front and uh, leading at this stage. But Tim Slyko doesn't believe that uh, Dick Johnson is, go is going to uh, go on with this one because he has not got off Johnson's tail, despite the fact that Johnson passed him in the last half lap. Well, Slyko has a weight advantage of nearly 200 kilograms over the Mustang and has in actual fact around about 10 extra horsepower. So on paper, at least, he's got all the right ingredients to threaten the Mustang. It's been a little while since he's had some really competitive touring car drives. He finished ninth at Bathurst quite a few years ago in an A9X Tirana. This year he's going to use his entire budget to concentrate on the big one in October. The right hander again. It's the man in fourth making the move towards the man in third, Robbie Francovic, getting up the Goodyear Hill and he is definitely starting to pull him in. Francovic running uh, a borrowed gearbox so recapping positions one through three the leader jim richards of the bmw second is brock and third is francovic and we'll be back at wanneroo with more live action fourth round of the australian touring car championship we've been following one man throughout this race the man who sat on the second row and that's dick johnson dick can you hear us yeah mike i can hear you well bad luck in the first corner but you've been driving like a demon oh uh, mate I went to change gear and I turned the goddamn ignition off. That doesn't happen often. No, uh, won't happen again either. OK, you're closing on Robbie Francovic and the Volvo that's using your gearbox. Uh, well, I hope he don't blow it up. Yes. The old member of the blue rinse set, Robbie is. Yes. I'll let you get through with passing him first and then we'll talk to you on the other side of the track. Yeah, OK. way he accelerated and waved you to pass him on the inside. Well, there's a go. Whoops. Sorry about that, Robbie. Thanks, pal. OK, now that must make you feel pretty happy. You've dropped out to 12th and you're back to 3rd. Well, that's uh, better than the poke in the eye with a burnt stick, I suppose. But I tell you what, it's, the work's not over yet. No, it's certainly not. If you go off this track, the trouble is if you... I think too many wheels up here, mate. I'll have to get the Leyland brothers to get me out. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Neal, I noticed the uh, red lights on the dash. What's that? Oh, mate, that's only when the oil pressure goes below about 50 pounds that the lights come on. Right. It's, it's another very good piece of engineering by the uh, Germans <laughs> that built the sump. <laughs> that's the last thing you go to change, eh? Well, you know, that's one part of the engine we haven't even touched yet. The place is notorious on tyres and brakes. How are they holding up? Well, you know, we're on these uh, Dunlops, mate, and they're just hanging in fine. But I've still got to catch Brock on them yet. Well, good luck to you. Thanks for talking to us. Not a problem, Mike. Thank you very much. Thanks. Well, there's our race leader coming up towards Motorcraft. And that is Jim Richards, winner of the opening round of the ATCC at Winton back in February on pole for this race and it looks like that old story is going to ring true again whoever sits on pole for one of these races usually manages to dash off and win brock running in second and probably or i'd say probably 300 meters back behind brock is dick johnson so he's got a lot of uh, work to do in order to be able to close up on brock and look uh, seriously at second place there's jim richards the cool man in the atcc set for uh, 1985 and that gap, incidentally, between Brock and Johnson at this stage, 11.9 seconds. So I have to watch that one with uh, close interest. The BMW team this weekend, it's been a little bit curious standing back and watching. They seem to have been very laid back compared to their efforts down in Tasmania. They took the cars to Amaru a week after having come back from Tasmania, did some testing. But Frank Garden told me yesterday that there really hasn't been too much to do. The gearbox problem they had down in Tasmania was a silly little 20 cent part, one of those things that just can happen sometimes. And right from the outset here on Thursday, the BMWs have been turning in very good times and uh, they've had very little work to do compared to everybody else. The car's sitting on the road well, it's braking well. Jim is saying that uh, there's plenty of life left.
in it even when it gets hot. And so it does look as though the JPS team may well take, very early in the stage though, uh, we can't really predict, but uh, may well take a second victory. So this will be um, handy in terms of points if Jim Richards can go on from here. Already clearly leading the championship with 63 points, uh, five points clear of his teammate Neville Crichton with 58. And of course Alan Jones back in third with 54. Jim Richards at this stage, a five second break over Peter Brock. And then of course, uh, Brock to Johnson, a further 12 seconds. So Johnson 17 seconds in arrears and cars 17. Okay, let's take a look at the man who leads the championship for 1985. 37 years of age, makes Melbourne his home these days. And leading the point score with 63 points. Winner at Bathurst, of course, 78, 79, 80. And fifth in the championship series last year, of course, under Group C. Group A this year, of course, Jim Richards is leading. A little about the man who leads the points chase for 85. And doing it very, very comfortably indeed. He's been an underrated driver for quite a number of years. Of course, he did some very good things in sports sedans in the uh, late 70s and early 80s. He's overshadowed, of course with his great performances, great drives at Bathurst with the Holden dealer team a few years ago. I think it was 78, 79 and 80. And it was a really good break for him to get into the JPS team where he could be number one driver. We look here at Peter Brock in second position, who has completely revised suspension settings and his choice of rubber for Sunday rather than Saturday. Yesterday they set the car up in a qualifying configuration to get the car onto the front row of the grid, which they successfully did. Today they've gone for a more conservative package, with a package which will take them right through the race. That gap uh, still about the same. Five seconds the difference from uh, Jim Richards back to Peter Brock. And a further trawl back to uh, Dick Johnson. A fresh engine has gone into the Mobile Holden dealer team Commodore for this weekend. They did quite a lot of laps out at Calder last week after coming back from Tasmania. Let's have a look at Peter Brock and the details about the man. 40 years of age from Eltham in Victoria, 19 years in racing, winner of Bathurst, 72, 5, 8, 80, 82, 83 and 84, that's incredible. Three years the Australian Touring Car Champion, nine times the winner of the Sandown Enduro and of course one of his great claims to fame was the Round Australia Trial. And obviously enjoying his motor racing in 85, a lot of development work still to do on the Commodore. I think we can expect the Commodore under the homologation handout to be a far more competitive car uh, by the time we go to the James Hardy 1000 at Bathurst. Enjoys coming across to Western Australia, does Peter Brock, because not only has he raced very well here in the past, but he also has a world fishing record up at Exmouth, a little bit further north here than here. But uh, I think in 1982 he came over here with John Farrell, who's another racing driver from Western Australia and the two of them go up north quite regularly. And in 82, Peter Brock pulled in about an 80 on pound for Belly to claim himself a world title, the world champion. <laughs> Brock coming up here around the outside of Bob Holden in the Toyota Sprinter. I don't think he was too pleased. By the look at the gestures he gave out the window. But he's got some clear road in front of him now. And I'll be very interested to put the clock back on and just see what that gap is. We'll keep timing that. There's Dick Johnson coming into view over the top of the hill at Goodyear. And uh, then look at the scrap that's developing here with Robbie Francovic, Neville Crichton is involved, Tim Slaco is involved, and also Alan Jones. They've been having a scrap for the last couple of laps as they go through. Jones has lost out a little in that. Obviously giving away some horsepower there and Slaco is getting down the inside here on Neville Crichton. He really knows that this is a uh, touring car championship race. It's a little different than most. There's been a lot of passing and repassing of cars in the midfield position. So Francovic, who uh, has been dusted off by uh, Dick Johnson. Johnson uh, leading Francovic by probably 150 metres. Cars really snapping at his tail for the last two laps. Crichton, who is running strongly there as well, not uh, known as being the uh, the best sprint driver 
in uh, touring cars, but he's a very, very strong finisher. Prefers the enduro races. There's Alan Jones, car number 27. He's the last one in the bunch as they come through the corner. And Alan Jones, of course, needs very little introduction to motorsport followers being our world champion. Here are some of his details. Alan Jones, 38 years of age, from Queensland these days, 23 years in the racing game, driving this weekend the Alfa Romeo. Third in the series at this stage with 51 points, a fourth at Bathurst in 84, and of course, World Formula One champion in 1980. Also the winner of the 1980 Australian Grand Prix when he brought the Williams FW07 to Calder. There's Alan Jones, number 27. Mines entry. The gap still the same. Five seconds from Jim Richards to Peter Brock and 12 seconds from Peter Brock back to uh, Nick Johnson. Well, the performance of this little alpha is quite remarkable when you consider that uh, it gives away a fair degree of capacity for the other cars. But the brilliance of the Jones boy keeps it up there. Just two and a half litres and fuel injected, of course, at five speed compares with, say, the car in front of it, the black BMW, three and a half litre fuel injected, about 1,200 kilograms, and they're exactly half race distance, as you can see, 20 laps down out of the 40 lap journey. Well, I wouldn't like to be Robbie Francovic right at the moment, Mark. Well, he's been able to uh, to halt Slaco uh, on the straight. I would have thought that the uh, road might have had just maybe a little more squirt if he was having problems, but this dice still continues. They're coming up on Bob Holden, we mentioned earlier. Bob driving the Toyota Sprinter. And down on the inside of Tim Sligo comes Neville Crichton. Whoops. Neville just wanted to make sure he had enough room. And cheeky Alan Jones says, thanks a million. He goes through on the freight train as well. So Tim Sligo looked pretty good there. He was right up behind Francovic. And now uh, is back behind that bunch. They're all trying to find their way past uh, Bob Holden. Francovic now finds a very businesslike uh, Neville Crichton closing on him. And then hold at the tail of the field. To the right hander. Here they come out of the turn. Crichton keeping this pressure on Robbie Francovic. Francovic waved Johnson through a few laps back. Jones sitting right in behind Crichton, just on the off chance that Crichton finds a way down the inside. That Volvo, the turbo, certainly gets down that hill in a hurry. Yeah, doesn't it ever? Although it's a little strange, there are places around Australia so far where we've seen the Volvo really dominate with incredible pace, and yet now it seems to be fairly evenly matched the BMW and the Alpha. They had differential problems with the car early yesterday, and then of course the gearbox problem late in the afternoon, so they're a little bit disgruntled this weekend, and look at Alan Jones all over the back of Neville Crichton, giving him plenty to think about. Look at Jones here. He throws the Alpha around. The car gets very light across the top of which Kelly S is. This left-hander. And drives it with the boot in all the way. Doesn't use the brakes at all coming through that part of the course where most of the other competitors at least have a dab. Plunges down the hill. On the outside of Neville Crichton, I shouldn't think is a good position, but he may well pull in tight, which he attempts to do, but I don't think there's enough of a gap. So, Francovic, Neville Crichton, Alan Jones and Tim Slaco. Crichton pulls out and looks for some clean air. And, of course, Francovic making sure that he shakes him out of the slipstream. And then a further gap back sees Bob Holden. Kevin Bartlett here doing battle with Colin Bond in car number 26. They've been having a good scrap the last five laps. Kevin Butler in the Mitsubishi Starion picked up uh, the bulk of his championship points at the opening round at uh, Winton back in February. And Colin Bond uh, qualified well here for this race, but there's obviously having uh, some problem to be so far back behind, uh, particularly even Alan Jones. But Kevin Bartlett having uh, a trouble-free weekend with the Mitsubishi Starion. Yes, the Starion this weekend has got uh, quite a revised engine management system it's a little black box for want of a better term a computerized engine management system and that uh, in consultation with the japanese now has been totally changed and uh, kevin at least hopes that some of his problems will be solved and until at least august the first when he gets uh, some of the components on the car that he really does need parts that he did homologate but unfortunately the paperwork didn't quite work out the way that it should have and that's been behind the eight ball now 
the next couple of months until things change. And Colin Bond, incidentally, just a couple of weekends ago, was the winner of a rally sprint near Canberra. So after being a road racing driver in the Alpha at Simmons, he then donned uh, a different arrangement for the car in this very car that we look at here now, used it as a rally car for the rally sprint, and now this weekend changes the configuration once again to come back to circuit racing. So Colin Bond still tagging there at the Rally Art Starion of um, Kevin Bartlett as they head up over Motorcraft, having their own personal scrap in this uh, fourth round. Still being dominated by Jim Richards out in front of the JPS BMW. Brock still in second. The gaps are almost identical with uh, five seconds between first and second and uh, 10 to 12 back between uh, Peter Brock and Dick Johnson. These two will be enjoying absolutely every moment of this. Two of the really talented and older stages. Bartlett, twice Australian driving champion. Of course, Colin Bond, one of the few people to have ever taken out an Australian rally championship and Australian touring car championship. So we'll take a break from Wanneroo. We'll be back with more action after this. The action has been basically from uh, lap 10. Tim Slaco of Western Australia, who's giving uh, his uh, hometown supporters uh, plenty to cheer about. Back behind Robbie Francovic, Neville Crichton and Alan Jones. They've all been very, very close together. In fact, only a lap or so ago, uh, Neville Crichton and Alan Jones figured in this. Crichton getting around a little too sideways, coming out of Castrol, through the rough, and then back out onto the racetrack again. Quite harmless, but it dropped him back two spots. He's trying to pull them back now. So Robbie Francovic gets to take a little of the pressure off himself and uh, has around about four or five car lengths back to Tim Slaco. And Jones, whilst being tangled up with Crichton, has now lost contact just a little behind Slaco. Jones, with his hand out the window on that occasion, indicates to Crichton where he can go through if he has the power, and it looks like he's going to be able to do it. Although Jones is brilliant under brakes in the oh. and Have a look at me. <laughs> he's incredible. Crosses it up, throws it in like a rally and car. throws rocks at him. Yeah, throws rocks. Keeps his boot firmly planted and steers his way out. As Colin Bond said to me this morning, he doesn't drive it, he picks it up and carries it around. It's been great to watch in the Touring Car Championship, and we'll stay with him and just watch him as he closes up again uh, behind Slaco, and Slaco is uh, not that far uh, behind, of course, Robbie Francovic in the turbo volume. It's Alan Jones, number 27, up to Motorcraft again. I think he's been using all of the tyres today too. They appear to have maybe gone off just a little bit, throwing the car around. Yes, well, they've been fiddling with all sorts of different tyre combinations in the last few weeks, and again, this weekend, opting for something different. But where Jones is really going to be at his own, and, uh, and if I would say soon, it'll be uh, Calder and Amaru, and perhaps even Oran Park. I think that he will then be well and truly in contention for outright honours. Once again, Neville Crichton. I don't think he's going to accept the signal to go by this time after what happened the last lap, but Jones still in there. I think Jones, he was setting a trap for him. He's done it very successfully. And on the inside, coming down to put a lap on Jim Keogh in the Commodore is uh, Slyko. Right behind him now is Alan Jones. Jim must have a problem because the car was very competitive in practice and the development of that car over the last few race meetings has been improving day by day and he's been circulating quite slowly. Well, they come up on Keo and uh, Jim hasn't had the best of days. In fact, he's lost it twice during the warm-up today. It'll be a bit of a worry. But Jones is going to try and fight. Whoop, little tail happy. And Neville went for the golden gasp too, I'll tell you, <laughs> because he was moving to the outside of him. Was well, well, under... trying, trying to find his way through the inside on that occasion and pulled the nose of the car down tight and one of the strongest started to slide in the back end. The Alpha and many of the other cars are left-hand drive, which puts them at a bit of a disadvantage at this track, whereas, say, for example, down at Simmons, the left-hand drive cars were in their element. Well, the order of the race is still the same. About uh, six seconds or eight seconds now, the gap between Jim Richards and Peter Brock, and 14 seconds the gap between Peter Brock and Dick Johnson. And we join Dick, who's still running third in the race. How's the back hanging out there, Dick? Uh, it's getting a bit sore, Mike. A bit tired? Uh, the back is, yeah. Well, you're up to third, about the same time gap, maybe a couple of seconds difference between Peter Brock. It looks like a third place. 
Yeah. This is the one corner that makes it really bad. Real bad indeed. I don't know how many laps there are to go, but uh, I hope there's not too many. Uh, only about nine laps still to go. Yeah. Feel like 99. Well, Jim Richards, it seems that everyone's writing the same story. Everyone who sits on pole position for one of these races seems to be able to go on and win it, Dick. Well, you never know, mate, because you, you don't lose too many points uh, over the first place getter. So uh, we're still in there with a the show once we get a bit more horsepower. Like it wouldn't pull the skin of a rice pudding, this thing. Well, you've proved something in that uh, you'll be able to come back through the field and uh, at least make your way up to uh, to third. Robbie Francovic has had his hands trying to contain Tim Slyko in the Rovers of Tess since you left him. Yeah, well, mate, I've always been the bridesmaid here and never the bride, so I'm getting used to it. Well, I think they're going to throw you the bouquet later. <laughs> OK, Mike. So back, uh, what's that? Back to you, Mike, in the central missionary position, is it? <laughs> Thank you, Dick. Oh, he's never short of a word, is he? There's our race leader, Jim Richards, the quiet man of motorsport, one of the country's tidiest race car drivers. And Frank Gardner has uh, a good man here. Coming over the top with the downhill run to the right-hander. So Jim Richards increasing his lead over Peter Brock. He's going to also increase his lead in the national point standings. And Brock consolidating uh, his second place. Dick Johnson about 14 seconds back in third. Yes, Richards would go on to uh, about 88 points. If he can manage to maintain the lead, he'll pick up 25 for a win in what's called Class C. Class C is the three to six litre cars. Class B, the two litre to three litre, which, for example, Alan Jones is in, and the up to two litre cars, Class A sliding point scale favours the smaller cars so every time somebody for example like Alan Jones has a high finishing position then uh, they're awarded accordingly. So Jim Richards really doing it quite comfortably at the moment and here's this battle which has been raging for the entire race coming up on Bob Holden once again Robbie Francis who goes through on 21 Tim Slaco in hot pursuit and really in contention here at the moment. John Smith behind there in the second of the sprinters and Slaco having a dash on the outside. Every time Slaco pulls out for a pass at anyone, the whole crowd here at uh, Wanneroo comes alive for good reason. He's the sole West Australian that will lift the roof off the grandstand They're at the moment. Screaming. Just listen to them. Tim Slaco coming down the inside of Robbie Francovic in the turbo volvo looking for fourth place in his first up start in the Robo Vitesse. Yes, and he's brought the crowd on <laughs> Heading up to Motorcraft now, so Slaco advances to fourth and a little smoke coming from the tail of the Volvo. It is slowing on the approach to uh, yep. to Motorcraft. Slaco goes through. There's car number 21. What a wretched day for Robbie Francovic, just trying to limp around the course. Replaced the gearbox after problems yesterday. And it looks like his uh, championship... Uh, run might well and true be over in this round anyway. Yes, well the car just gave a little telltale puff coming down the main straight that time over the crest. Didn't look as though it was terminal, but the car in trouble now quite obviously. So very bad luck for Robbie Francovic after deciding after a period of indecision that they would come to Perth and it was worth spending the money only to come away with what appears now to be a did not finish result. Well, he has a busy week ahead of him, of course, Robbie Francovic, because he's off to join the opening round of the Better Breaks Group A series in Sydney next weekend at Amaru Park. That should be a pearler. And, of course, Steve Masterton makes his uh, Group A debut there in the Masterton Homes 2WS Commodore. So that's something to look forward to in our motorsports coverage. Just ambling around is uh, Robbie Francovic. Well, if you can keep yes. it going, Mike, the uh, point situation with the current crop of rules is that uh, I think the points are awarded right down to 20th position so if Robbie Francovic can circulate at least it'll be worth something to him there's nothing you can do in a sprint race in terms of calling into the pits and rectifying any of these types of problems because the crew simply aren't geared for it 
year as though he's going to stay out there. The owner of the car, Mark Petch from New Zealand, is off to Sweden in a couple of weeks to pick up the second round of the European Touring Car Championship. He'll be having a very close look at what Volvo are doing in Sweden at the moment and apparently bringing back some more bits and pieces to build their second car. And about midway through the year, the Petch team will put Francovic and Petch into the newer of the two cars. Here's the dice between Slaco and Crichton. Slaco has worked his way up to fourth, but Devil Crichton, who has a very strong finishing record, has been able to pull that gap back in the last two circuits. We're only about four laps away from home, and uh, Tim Slaco, there he goes through with Neville Crichton. Down towards the right-hander. See if whether or not he can uh, outgun the Rover on the run-up uh, Goodyear Straight up the hill. Slaco comes out of the bend, full acceleration there right behind him in the BMW looking to consolidate uh, his current points position in the championship is of course uh, Neville Crichton and here he comes pulls out of the draft down the inside Slaco I don't think will give the run of the road so Neville Crichton still having uh, his hands full trying to pull fourth place back away from Tim Slaco it's a brand new engine in this car here the Tim Slaco car built and prepared by Andy Rouse in England Rouse was saying on the phone to Tim Slaco early in the week that uh, the engine that they've built for him is the best engine they've ever built with about an extra 10 horsepower over what they've enjoyed in England. So Slaco has done a lot of the work on the body, on the suspension, and uh, the components arrived for the engine last week. And as you can quite well see, it's, uh, it's super competitive, and I wouldn't really have thought that it would be so far up in the field this early in his uh, competitive run this year. So Crichton's still knocking on the door. Neville Crichton, a New Zealander, as is Tim Slaco, campaigning this year for the entire Australian Touring Car Championship. And a driver who is extremely well suited to endurance racing. Not hard on the car, always brings it home. And at the moment, though, is quite perplexed as to how to get around the back of this Rover. He's tried for, here he goes, down the inside for the run to Castrol. Wasn't much in that. He keeps the pressure on Slaco as they uh, exit the Castrol turn and work up towards Motocraft. Here's our race leader, car number 62, Jim Richards. Coming along the start finishing straight with the laps running out, a couple of circuits still to go for Jim Richards, still holding uh, a good break over Peter Brock in the 05 Commodore down to uh, five seconds between those two drivers so whether well, Jim has eased off the pace just a little or Brock has closed up we don't know but he still that's a comfortable margin with uh, with two laps to go as he heads up towards motocraft corner once again well if he can continue to show this sort of consistency he'll be a deserving winner of the first ever group a australian touring car championship and it also has to so much uh, work, so much effort into their two-car team. Now through the gears, right-hander as Jim Richards. And the full horsepower heads up Goodyear Hill again. It's interesting watching Jim go around at the moment because he's about the only driver on the course who is not using heaps and heaps of roads. So he's got the uh, clever ability of being able to keep the car straight and keep the times up, which uh, the others haven't been able to do. Half litre, six cylinder fuel injected BMW. Produces around about 295 brake horsepower, so on paper at least the BMW shouldn't really be that good compared to, say, for example, the Volvo. Well, at the moment, as I say, the, uh, the proof of it's going to be on the board because our, uh, Volvo driver Robbie Francovic is still limping around and Richard's about to put one more lap on him as they go over the crest and head down to bottom of the hill into the right-hander. Here comes uh, Jim Richards. Coming out of the corner now. There's Robbie Francovic, still limping around, trying to find his spot. Neville Crichton in the meantime passes Slaco. He moves up to fourth. So it looks like a BMW. Not a 1-2 like we had at uh, Winton, but a 1-4 for today. 
dropping down through the hill over the top of the rise there at Goodyear. Car number 62, Jim Richards, comes out of the final corner. He won the opening round at Winton. He will win the fourth round at Wanneroo. Jim Richards takes round four. Second place will go to Peter Brock in the 05 Commodore, a gap of about 3.68 seconds. And probably about 17 seconds back behind them will be Dick Johnson in uh, car number 17. He'll take third place. Fourth place will go to Neville Crichton. And fifth place to Tim Slaco of Western Australia. Then Alan Jones. Let's recap the placings. The winner, Jim Richards. Second place going to Peter Brock. And third place to Queensland's Dick Johnson.